Well, hello, everyone. We are honored and privileged to have Kira McClellan today. Kira, say hi to the people. Hi. We are so excited to be able to ask you a bunch of questions and for people to be able to get to know you more. So, Kira, let's start by asking the question, what is your favorite restaurant in the Wilmette area? Um, probably Valley Lodge. Valley Lodge? You go so high class. Uh, what do you like about Valley Lodge Tavern? Um, well, we don't go there often, so it's sort of like a fun experience to go. Yeah. Um, all of their food is amazing, and I think that inside of it is, like, really pretty architecture. So yeah. I feel like it's always fun to go. Do you like the bread that they give as kind of a appetizer? The bread is very good. Yeah, it is awesome. That's great. I, I would have, you could have given me 20 restaurants to guess that you would have said, and I wouldn't have guessed Valley Lodge, um, but that's awesome. Uh, Kira and I live in the same neighborhood, so the first couple of questions are going to be neighborhood-based. And the neighborhood that we live in is that we live right next to, nearby, the Northwestern Football Stadium. Kira is even closer than I am. So, Kira, what is it like living next to the football stadium? Um, it can get very, very annoying sometimes because I'll be trying to sleep, and then people will be setting off fireworks, and people will be asking to park in our driveway and stuff. But, I mean, I do like it because I don't have to, like, watch the TV. I just know when people score because um, louder screams Northwestern, lower screams the other team. So I just sort of know. Yeah, you but, basically just that's, – that's incredible. <laughs> uh, do you ever go to, like, the baseball or the football games or not really? No, the only time I really go over there is I'll go skateboarding with my friends in the parking lot. But yeah. I don't go to the games, but – yeah, that parking lot is vast, and for the majority of the time, it is wide open spaces. It's very fun. Good. Well, that's awesome, Kira. Uh, next question. What's your favorite animal? Um, so, I like really any type of, like, cats, but I think my favorite type of, like, big cats, um, Siberian white tigers are my favorite. That's, so. in my opinion, when you say that, they're, like, aggressive. Is that true or false? Um... Partly, if they have, um, like, I've seen people who, um, like, raise them, and they're just, like, normal, everyday people, so if you raise them, then they can be, like, literally house cats, and just, like, cuddle up with you in your bed, and, like, be the sweetest things ever, but I've noticed that if you do see them in the wild, you can't outrun them, because they're extremely fast, Yeah. so you just have to, like, lay down on the ground and pretend to be dead. They're, but they're, they're full survival. super cute, so I don't care. I love them. But. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, some people tune into these video, in videos for survival tips, and that's what we bring here on 20 Questions. Uh, all, I, you have other siblings that like animals. Uh, I think of Ian, and he's, he's somebody that loves animals. But I want to know, what's it like being the youngest sibling out of Ian, Owen, and Kira? I feel like it's almost limited because – um they can well like they can take their friends places and like be out and I just have to be like I have to ask my parents if I can go anywhere and just like I don't know I don't have as much freedom I guess yeah but I mean it's fun because I always have like even if they're mean sometimes sometimes they can be like nice and fun so Sometimes they can be nice and fun. I co-sign that Ian and Owen are nice and fun. Uh, but it is true when you have to play like a different game, essentially, live by different rules. It's like, you know, when they were your age, they had to do the same thing. But when you see it, it's like tough because you, you just want that privilege that they have. I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest sibling too, here. I get it. Uh, favorite board game to play? Catan. Catan. And how often would you say you play Catan? Is it regular or just every once in a while? We used to play it regularly, but then it would always end up in um, Ian winning and then us all fighting. So now we don't play it as much. Yeah. But it's still fun. So. Would you say your family's competitive? I feel like decently competitive. Definitely the siblings are more competitive than my parents. Yeah. I've played Catan once. And uh, I don't really, like, the game style, I like that style of game, but I've just never, like, grabbed onto it. So in 12 seconds, pitch to the people why Catan is a good game. Um, I mean, not only is it fun, but it has strategy, and um, it's also just, like, 
fun to see how other people mind work like oh where do you want to move like for instance the robber and where do you need to put your place to get this many resources to buy this sort of stuff and it's just like you have to see where people go place their roads and try to get like longest road and it's just like I don't know I like it strategies are fun and to try to figure out other people's strategies and the counter strategy you need for that I, I love that stuff too what is an overrated TV show, in your opinion, Kira? Okay, so I know that a lot of people disagree with me, but Stranger Things is so unbelievably overrated that I just, I don't like it. So you straight up don't like it? I mean, I feel like the concept is cool, but I don't know, I feel like the portrayal of it is just not necessarily like, Correct. I feel like it would be better as a book than as a like a TV show. That's an awesome take. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I would say it, the thing with Stranger Things is it's super super popular, right? So mm-hmm. unless it's really 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 stinking good, it's probably in some ways overrated. Because when something gets to that level where it's like you gotta know this, or or you don't know the current conversation about TV. It's like, well, that might be a little overrated. So I personally, I personally agree, but that just might be us, Kira. We might just not get it as much as everyone else. But I love that take. Next question. Favorite book that you have read this year? Probably Out of My Mind. What's it about? I don't think I know that one. It's about um, a girl with um, cerebral palsy and she like can't talk or do anything, but she has like, she's extremely smart so she has to like live her life like trying to communicate to people wow. and yeah, it's really good is it is it based on a true person's experience or is it fictional um i think it's it's realistic fiction um i know that the author i forget who it is but he has cerebral palsy i'm pretty sure so it's sort of cool because he has that experience i yeah. think but what a good book for you to read, Kira. Was it through school or did you just pick it up another in another way? Um, it was half sort of for school because um we need to like read a book, but then um my friends recommended it to me, so yeah. I just read that. Out of my mind, was that it? Yeah. Out of my mind. Check it out, folks. That seems like a topic everyone should be more more aware of um, in our world. We'd have a better world with that. Next question. What is one thing that you have learned in 2020? Um, I mean, I feel like this one really, really came to me. Like, be grateful for things things and, like, time that you have with people. Yeah. Because in an instant, like, in a week, we were, I mean, I was in Seattle. And then all of a sudden, we were in quarantine. And, like, we couldn't go out or anything. Yeah. So just kind of being present and, and appreciative because, you know, tomorrow's not promised for anybody. Uh, we don't really know what it even is going to look like. So that's a, it's a great reminder to constantly have in your life is, is to embrace where you are and embrace the good that's there. Next question coming your way. What is your favorite month of the year, just in general? Probably July. Yeah, it's a good one. What do you like about July? Um, so in July, um, we have the freedom of summer and so you can basically do anything. And then also in July, I go to Minnesota and that's super, super fun because my cousins down here, even though they're like fun, they're all older. So like, it's hard to connect with them. But then my cousins in Minnesota are like my age and it's just way more fun. I don't know. The heat doesn't bother you because that's probably the hottest month. Um, I... I stay inside a lot during summer. I'm not like, I like the outdoors, but if I'm not doing anything, like including like water or anything, I prefer to stay inside and like game all summer. Yeah. So. Who's the biggest gamer out of you, Ian and Owen? We're all pretty big, but I'm pretty sure it's Ian. Agreed. Next question, what's an underrated thing about the winter? we got to start looking at the positives of what we're going to get into this next season. What's underrated about winter? Um, I feel like the coziness of just, like, being able to just, like, lay in bed and, like, drink hot chocolate or, like, coffee or anything and just, like, I don't know. Oh. But, yeah. 
The coziness is huge. Um, but that brings up a question I have for you. Do you drink coffee? No. Okay. But the hot chocolate, the, the warm drink. I, I can't stand coffee. Yeah. it's but. Don't sign yourself up for it because you're kind of signing a life contract. As soon as you start uh, participating, it becomes pretty hard to remove it from your, your uh, daily life. Yeah. Coziness in winter is, is awesome. Favorite snack, Kira? Cheeto puffs. Cheeto puffs? Not yeah. just regular Cheetos? They're not the same. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I like them. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like them. I don't get how people can not like them. Like, they're just, like, when we're on car trips, that's really the only time that I'll get them. But I'll get, like, a family pack, and I'll eat it in, like, 20 minutes because it's just, like, so delicious. So you like the texture of Cheeto Puffs more than regular Cheetos? Yeah, and I also feel like, I mean, it just sort of like melts in your mouth, but it's also like the same taste, so yeah. I don't know. It really does melt in your mouth, and, and most people describe that, you know, use that phrase for a much different food than Cheeto Puffs, but I completely agree. That's a great one. I, I love that you do that. Is there any flavors with Cheeto Puffs, or are they, is it just regular? I don't. I think there's floating Hot Cheeto Puffs, but I... I've never had it. I yeah. only have the originals. Yeah. So this next question is kind of a, uh, an absurd one, Kira, but I'm ready to hear your answer. Would you rather live in a world where every single day is Thanksgiving or you never have Thanksgiving? So literally whatever Thursday looks like for you, that, that framework is every single day for your, for your life or nothing. I feel like every day be Thanksgiving. Go on. Um, food. I love like pumpkin pie and stuff. So um, that we have no school for like that day. So it's just sort of like a nice free day. Um, the only thing that I wouldn't like about it is <laughs> this is gonna sound like absurd, but like having to be with like my like extended family every single day and like talking about the same things like every single day I feel like that repeating would just be like I don't know it's not absurd at all any group that you'd be with every single day and you're like have to only connect with them would be a really challenging dynamic no matter if it was your best friends or your mortal enemies you know like that's just challenging <laughs> But uh, I wanted, it's a crazy question, but I wanted to hear, you would commit to Thanksgiving. Overall, you think it's a better life uh, living that stuff than if you had to never have it. Yeah. Incredible. It's my favorite holiday. So I, uh, and I don't even know if I can fully commit to Thanksgiving every day. I feel like, I feel like I'd gain a lot of weight and uh, I don't know if I'd learn much except for football because that's what's on TV. But thanks for, thanks for being a good support with that question. Favorite room at Winneka Covenant Church? Another just weird question. What's your favorite room? Um, this one, it was sort of hard, but I think the youth room. Would yeah. it's, it's, the easy, it's the easy answer. So say why. And then if there was another one that you've considered, I'd love to know that. Um, I like the youth room because it's just like so, I don't know, like comfortable. And, like, there's, like, the big couches, and you can just sort of, like, sit there yeah. and, like, just, like, talk freely. And I feel like that's just fun. Um, the other one I was thinking of is the art room because I really like art. So that was sort of, like, my debate. Yeah. Do you go in the art room often still as a, as a not child? Not a lot, but. Yeah. 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 Those are two great ones. Two great rooms in Winnetka Covenant Church. What, uh, if you have uh, an idea of this, do you know what job you want to have as an adult? Yeah, pretty much. So. What is it? Um, so I personally, I want to do something with music or like animals. And um, I'm pretty good with like people. So we were talking and my mom was saying like, you should be like an animal or a music therapist. So, like, go to, like, children's hospitals or something and, like, have dogs and, like, either, like, music. Like, my cousin's a music therapist, and she loves it. So, do something like that, almost. That would be so awesome. And you'd be so good at that, Kira. You are really good with people, and you can bless a lot of folks by doing that uh, as a line of work. 
That's great. Next question. Do you have a favorite Bible verse and do you have it where you could read it? Um, I feel like there's a lot of them, but I feel like my favorite one is, um, I think it's like first Peter five, seven or something. And it's, um, uh, like cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Yeah. I feel like that's just a good verse. And, and why do you like that verse? Um, well, cause I'm a lot of the times really anxious. So I feel like that just like, when I think of that, I'm like, oh, okay. I can be sort of calmer and then I can put it there. Yeah. And it kind of reminds you that it's okay to be anxious, right? That, that it's almost like expected that that will happen. And that yeah. the plan, not just having to remain there, there's this plan to, to bring our creator and bring uh, Jesus into those moments. Amen. I like that a lot too. What do you miss about not being able to go up to camp, uh, Covenant Point, Covenant Harbor? What's, what's something you miss with that? Um, I feel like knowing that there's um, always, like, somebody or, like, something to do or, like, somebody to just, like, be with or, like, talk to about really, like, anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's really remarkable, right? Like, all these people are here and together and you eat meals together and uh, go outside, do activities, that kind of community, just fully always around is really remarkable. And to interact with such a wide variety of things, as you're saying, I think we all miss those things. Speaking of camp, what's your favorite thing about summer, just in general? Probably the freedom. <laughs> you said that You said that with July, too. Uh, does it I love like you're not free outside of summer? Well, I like... I feel like in summer, you just have, like, the time to do whatever you want. Like, I could go to the park and play basketball. I could go to the beach and swim. I could just sit inside all day and game or watch YouTube. And I just, like, have this time where the rest of the year I'm, like, doing school probably for half of the day. And I'm, like, I have to get this done before I can do what I want. Yeah. I guess. That's a great point. A, you have freedom of activities more options to do outside obviously not like snow stuff but a lot of things to be outside and freedom of time freedom of time those things are, are very true all right we got a couple more here if you could tell the february 2020 version of kira anything what would it be um this like year will be super hard for everybody but you're all going through it together and you're gonna be at least get to November and be fine yeah <laughs> you did you have made it uh we can guarantee November 24th and and it's good that you can say that you're fine too that's a big blessing um even amidst all the hard all amidst all the hardness um we are together amen what is your favorite part of Winneka Covenant Youth Ministry Kira probably the community yeah what do you like about the community um there's like I mean people your age people who are older but you all have like similar interests but then also like different interests so it's fun to like see what other people are like talking about and why they're talking about that or what they're like into and stuff like that I feel like it's really nice yeah Kira do you know how old I am I always forget but can I put you on the spot and can you guess live on this recording uh I feel like, um, I forget. I feel like you're like, like 30 or something. I'm going to be 30 in January. So you're so, that's basically right. That's a really tough question. And uh, good job, Kira. Last question. Is there anything you want to tell the people about Kira McClellan? Anything to uh, sign off on? Um, I feel like if I come off like rude or anything, I'm not trying to be. It's just like a time that I feel like I need to be alone, mm. I guess. Yeah. And that like I don't mean to be rude at all. It's just like I just want to be like alone right now, I yeah. guess. Everybody needs that space, right? And it's really important. Um, but I have literally never thought in my life that Kira McClellan is being rude. So you don't have to worry about that with me and I think most people, if not all people at Winneka youth ministry would agree because you're awesome Kira we're so happy that you've been here as we sign off uh I want to say that if we're going to ask 20 questions we got to ask at least one at a time so thanks for joining us and see you next time